Today's top story from the perspective of someone who's there. You are looking live. This just in. Not my beat. There is Nats Park, and there is where we find Toby Altizer, uh, our own here at the Team 980 and 106.7 The Fan, host of Bust and Loose Baseball. And I got to say, Toby, I was looking forward to sitting across and having a conversation with you. What amazing content piece meant that you couldn't be in studio with us? What have you been working on over there? Well, I've been grabbing video of James Wood. We've been following all around, and it was one of those things, Craig, that I came back to D.C. last year to start working back out here in uh, 980 and with 106.7, and I haven't seen this many media people at Nets Park since I've been back here. So it is a, it's an occasion that I haven't been able to experience yet in my time covering the team, but it's really cool to see just everybody's really fired up. I'm, I'm standing by the Mets dugout watching them take VP right now, looking across the Nets, and you've got all the TV stations over there, even people just not even from D.C. area come into town to see what's going on with James Wood tonight. Yeah, no, it's it's an exciting day. You can you can come in studio another day. It's fine. I'll sit across from you. You were great uh, when, when we got to sit down and chat uh, at, at Commander's uh, mini camp. It's fine. Uh, and, and I'm not going to lie, Toby, the uh, the crack of the bat in the background, nice sound effect. So we'll we'll live with it. Um, Absolutely. So to the point you just made, though, this is the, the most people you've seen out there. The, the Nats have been in rebuild mode for a couple of years now. Is this the biggest day for the Nash? Like, fill in the blank, I guess. What This is the biggest day for the Washington Nationals organization since blank. Honestly, I mean, obviously you can go to the World Series. Obviously you can talk about those seasons. But if we're talking debuts, I don't think it's hyperbolic to say this is the biggest debut since Harper. And the reason being, like, you know, you look at some of the other, there were the, the guys coming up to help out a team that was already good. You look at a Rendon, you look at a Turner, you look at even a Victor Robles and some of those guys. And they were highly coveted prospects and turned out to be really good players, obviously. But if you think back to the Strasburg debut, you think back to the Harper debut, it had a very similar feel to the fact that, like, these were savior of the franchise type guys. And that's what this feels like with James Wood, a guy that, You've got C.J. Abrams playing short tonight. You've got Mackenzie Gore on the mound tonight. And then you bring up a guy that could be an MVP caliber player in James Wood that is just such a unique skill set at 6'7", and just a a guy that could be the cornerstone of this franchise going forward. I think that's the magnitude of this where, you know, the Nats have been rebuilding for, you know, a couple of years now. But this is one of those things where it feels like this might be where the turning point is. We look back when James Wood was called up. July 1st of 2024, and that's when things started really going in the direction of hopefully another championship. I was listening to you and Grant on Bust and Loose Baseball this morning, and you guys talked about a couple of things that I want to hit on. Um, One is that, like, why is this happening now? Um, Because you both said that you thought Wood was the best player in national spring training, so why is it taken till July for him to get to the bigs? Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the answer you're going to get from the Nationals would be they wanted to see him work on some things, some seasoning, you know, whether it's playing in the outfield. You know, one of the things that came out uh, early into the season was he needed to work on left-on-left pitching, which, ironically, the first three pitchers the Mets are going to throw out in the series are all lefties, and he's facing David Peterson tonight. So we'll see how he does there. But he ended up crushing left-handed pitching the following week. So at that point, it seemed like there were no excuses. It was all about the contract and getting that extra year of control and avoiding Super 2, which is, you know, very contracty stuff that, you know, they want an extra year of control if they haven't spent a lot of money uh, on the team in the recent years. But then he got hurt right when it seemed like it was about a time that he would have come up maybe middle of June. He hurt his hamstring, and they just were extra cautious, and that's how you end up at July 1st being his debut. Toby Altizer, host of Bustin' Loose Baseballs, with us from Nationals Park. Um, I loved the comparison that you used on the podcast uh, between kind of the because everyone, everyone I think knows like he's six foot seven. That's if if people know one thing about James Wood is that he is an enormous man. But can you like kind of describe who he is as an athlete and where he's different from say baseball's other giants and guys like Aaron Judge? Yeah, I mean, and the comparison that I used on there is you look at Aaron Judge and, you know, if you're, you love football like most of your listeners do, you, you see Aaron Judge, you think tight end. You think a dude that's going to be running over the middle. He's a little bit burly, maybe not the most nimble. But you see James Wood, and he looks like he should be playing small forward for the Wizards. Like, he looks like someone that's cutting back door you're throwing lobs to. He looks like an athlete. And when you watch him run the base pass, he opens up. It's, 
it's long strides, and it's one of those guys, Craig, that you know he's one of those unique athletes where his speed is evident, but when you watch him, it almost looks like he's not running full speed just because he's that sort of an athlete. I think when I've seen Shohei play before, it felt like that, where it just didn't seem like he was going that fast, but when you looked at how fast he was actually going compared to other guys, he was absolutely flying. That's the kind of athlete that James Wood is, and I think he's still going to add some weight to his frame. But honestly, he just looks like a basketball player, and I think that's why he does so well in the outfield, patrolling out there and then running the base pads. I, uh, Sam Dykstra covers minor league baseball, and Jacob Young is the fastest dude on the Nationals, and they define bolts as 30 feet per second, which is really, really fast, obviously. Jacob Young has 31 of those, which is impressive. The rest of the Nationals combined have 11 this season. So far this year, James Wood has 12. So he's not Jacob Young fast, but he's probably the second fastest guy on the team, which is Again, at a six seven athlete, it just shows you how athletic he is to go along with the immense power that he has as well. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, so what kind of impact can Wood realistically have now? Let's start there before we project out to the future. The Nats are thirty nine and forty four. So they're I mean, they're fifteen and a half games behind the Phillies, but who cares about that? But like they're they're five games under five hundred. Like, is, this, is is Wood good enough, and can he be impactful enough immediately that along with the growth of some of these other younger players that has been happening this year, that they can fight for a wild card spot, or is that too much to ask? Are we looking at next year is when the Nats finally get competitive? I think you look at next year, but I, I don't think it's crazy to think that if he comes up and plays well, they could stick around the race. Like, I, I don't see any reason that they this ball club can't just a few games within 500 all year, and with how bad the National League's been this season. I think that's, you know, fighting for a playoff spot of the wild card team. But the big thing that he brings, I mentioned the power, that's what he brings. This, this Nationals ball club is one of the fewest, as it's some of the fewest home runs in all of Major League Baseball. This is a guy that can down the line hit 30 or 40 home runs. He was on a 30-plus home run pace this year at AAA. So he's going to bring power to a lineup that's just lacking it. And in modern baseball where – Pitching's harder to hit than ever, where they're throwing 97, 98 with a wicked curve and all the nasty stuff that it is. It's hard to string hits together, and that's really how the Nationals have had to score runs. That's why they steal a lot of bags. That's why they play small balls. That's why they have to do all that, because they just lack a long ball. The easiest way to get on the board, Craig, is just hit one over the fence, and they just don't have a bunch of guys that can do that. James Wood can provide that. So, you know, it's a loaded question, too, because, you know, I, I hope he comes up and plays well, but you look up the road in Baltimore, Jackson Holiday was a highly coveted prospect. And with all the hype following him, he started two for 34. So, you know, it's one of those things that it wouldn't be surprising, too, if he came up and struggled because Ken Rosenthal, the athletic, wrote a fantastic piece earlier this year detailing that the jump from AAA to the majors is bigger than ever in terms of facing pitching. So it's something to watch, but I think there is real excitement about James Wood coming up, and I think he can make enough of an impact if they at least stay in, stay in contention. And shocking turn of events, Major League Baseball, harder than AAA. Uh, Toby Altizer is with us here on the Hoffman Show. So with that, though, like real, I mean, I, I, it's funny to, when I was listening to you guys this morning. Uh, again, Toby's the host, Host, if you don't know, Bust and Loose Baseball. Uh, our, I, it, I will use it. I will do this to you only once this time, Toby. The take command of the Nationals. Uh, our Odyssey uh, baseball podcast here uh, with 106.7 The Fan and the Team 980. Um, and you can with definitely us, right? definitely worth checking out uh, on the Odyssey app if, if you want to check it out or wherever it is that you listen to your podcast. But listening to you and Grant talk about that this is the biggest one since Harper. And I was like, wait, didn't they skip over Soto? And I kind of forgot because I'm not like a baseball diehard like you guys are that Soto was a guy that was unheralded coming up, but it became very apparent very quickly like, oh, this guy's good and he's good right now realistically when you look at wood of of you know somewhere between soto and jackson holiday like what's your best guess on how good he can be right now and then how long it takes for him to to be at the peak of his powers which presumably is years down the line yeah that's a tough one because soto was such an advanced hitter like he's a kid that was coming up as a 19 year old that looked like a 10 year vet at the plate and it's, it's discipline I, I don't think Wood has that, but I think he also has more raw power than what Soto would have had when he came up. I, I don't think he's going to struggle like Holiday. He's just got too much pop in his bat. I think he's someone that just – he's a little more, I guess, just down the line. He, he's been – he's played a little more minor league baseball than Holiday. So I, I think you can expect a guy that can come up and provide – like last year he really struggled with strikeouts at double-A, made some swing adjustments, and he's cut down on the strikeout rate. I think that's the big thing to watch if 
you know, if he's able to continue to make a contact like he did at AAA. But, I mean, uh, you know, what, say a 240 hitter uh, as a rookie somewhere around there and, you know, continuing as the year goes on, I think I think that's a, a healthy expectation. And, if you know, if he exceeds it, great. If he's a little bit worse, then it's also fine because, you know, as like you said, I think he hits his powers, you know, next year and continues to grow and grow. Like, you think about C.J. Abrams and the growth he made from last season to this season. Like, I think those guys are going to continue to grow. Like, we haven't even seen the prime of C.J. yet. We haven't seen the prime of Gore yet. So, it's one of those things you build on it year over year. So I don't know exactly when he hits the peak of his powers, but I wouldn't be surprised if he plays well enough, like you said earlier, that he can at least keep these guys in it. Yeah, of course, Wood and Soto are tied because Wood was the biggest prospect in that trade uh, That when the Nats sent Juan Soto out to San Diego. You mentioned Mackenzie Gore also in that trade on the mound tonight. C.J. Abrams starting at shortstop, as he has been all year. Uh, and even going back to last year, he was up in the bigs when that trade went down how many pieces are left at this point these are the three biggest that we'll all see at nats park tonight but what what's left for the soto trade to continue to look forward to and what else should we be looking forward to over the next month as we get nearer to baseball's trade deadline if anything from the nationals so from from the soto deal there's still two more guys robert hassel the third he's in double a right now i believe and he's he was viewed as the safest prospect when he was traded he was dealing with an injury last year, and he kind of had a down year. But he's someone that could come up down the line and be either that third outfielder or a fourth outfielder that's going to be a solid bat. I don't know that he's quite all-star caliber. He's fringe all-star caliber, but he's a solid player. He'll be here, uh, you would think, maybe by the end of this year, if not early next season, middle of next season. And then the intriguing one is Harleen Susana. He was a young pitcher out of the Dominican that they got in the trade. And this is a guy that pitched the Nats prospect game when they played out here. And he's throwing 103 and, and nasty stuff with a slider and struck out Joey Gallo, almost had an immaculate inning here against the Nationals big league club. Like he's been really impressive this year over his last five starts. He started the year kind of bad. His ERA still is over five, I believe, but over his last five starts, he's been fantastic. So he's someone to keep an eye on, but the, James Wood, and the reason this is so significant is we talk about Irvin, we talk about Parker, we talk about all these national guys coming up, and they've been nice surprises. They've been good. But when it comes to the elite prospects that are going to be the building blocks of this franchise, C.J. Abrams had already been in the bigs with San Diego, so when he came over, he stayed in the bigs. Same thing with Gore. Wood's the first one that wasn't in the big leagues. He comes up. Next is Dylan Cruz. Next is Brady House. And that's your next building block franchise cornerstone guys. And so Wood's the first one of that elk to come up. And that's why it's so significant. And this could be that turning point for hopefully, like I said, a next championship run for the Nets. For House and Cruz, how far away are we? I think most people have definitely heard of Cruz, the number in the year where every Washington team seemingly had a number two pick. He was the Nationals. Yeah. House, uh, you know, previous to that. So how far away are we for those two and ever all these young guys being kind of being on the field together? Uh, assuming that Cruz continues to play the way that he has, I would not be surprised at all if we see him in September or maybe just slightly earlier earlier than that. If not, you're, we're talking May, June of next year. But I would think that Cruz is early this year. I think House has a little bit longer, but I still think we're talking middle of next season. And both of those guys, House brings some real big power at third base. Cruz can do a little bit of everything. He's almost like a master of none, but a uh, jack of all trades, good at everything. And he's actually really, really fast. That's all someone talking about that as well. So he's going to be the center fielder of the future. House is the third baseman of the future. So, you know, those guys coming down the line, I would think we'll see both of them by the middle of next season, but we'll see Cruz before Wood or before House. All right, last thing for Toby Altizer here, host of Bustin' Loose Baseball, our Odyssey Sports Baseball podcast. He does with Grant Paulson, really, really good stuff on James Wood. If you want more, definitely check out the episode. And obviously, if you're a Nats fan, you probably already know it exists. Uh, and if not, you're welcome, uh, but you should listen uh, <laughs> as often as they put out shows. Um, the thing that always, I think, struck me about Soto and Harper is their star power. Obviously, they're both tremendous MVP caliber baseball players, multi-tooled, the whole deal. But they also were dynamic people that cause people to care about baseball in a way that that's hard in modern times when baseball is not the, the, the America's pastimes, you know, most popular sport uh, that it was for decades and decades in this country. What do we know about James Wood, the guy, and kind of the personality? And does he have any, you know, obviously his game is incredibly dynamic, but, like, what about the dude? Yeah, that's where it gets interesting, Craig, because you mentioned Harper, and Harper's obviously very dynamic, a guy that's very boisterous and just, you know, outgoing and, and willing to, you know, stir up a little bit here and there. And he's 
he's one of those guys that's easy to get behind in that sense. And then you look at Soto, and he's the, the fun-loving guy. Like, I came over last year when he returned uh, with San Diego for – one of the first times since he come back, I think maybe the second or third series he come back, and he's chatting it up with all of his former teammates, and he was clearly like a clubhouse, like the, the, the cheerful guy. Whereas when you look at James Wood, he's a very quiet guy. He's someone that's not super outgoing. Like when we're talking to him before the game today, you know, he's not giving you you know three minute answers every time you ask him something. He's very soft spoken. So I'm intrigued to see how he does in that sense, and. You know, CJ's grown in his leadership, so maybe he'll kind of fall in some of how CJ has, because CJ's kind of a soft-spoken guy as well. But I, I'm interested to see how that is, Craig. I don't, I don't have a big answer on that because he is very quiet, and so even when we've had chances to talk to him, even in just passing, it's nothing where it's a, a long, drawn-out conversation. So I'm interested to see how he does, but the other part about it is the Nats clubhouse as a whole is just a bunch of really good guys, and so I think he's going to fit in really well with the clubhouse but I don't know how dynamic of a personality is going to be for the fans. Interesting, because that was one of the things that I think made that 2019 team so fun is you had a guy like Soto. And, um, I mean, Soto was so funny, covered for Anthony Rendon, uh, which, mm -hmm. you know, if if you know, you know. Uh, Toby Altizer with us from Nats Park. Uh, Toby, enjoy the night, uh, James Wood night there at the ballpark, and we'll talk to you soon about how it's all going. Yeah, I'll drop by the studio sometime uh, yeah, down, that. The, down the line, Craig. Yeah, yeah, just, you know, not over the phone. Although, uh, the, 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 again, the, the pop of the bat, that's, that's, at least you could do it where that's in the background. <laughs> Absolutely, Craig. All right, see you, buddy. That is Toby Altizer with us, boys and girls. Uh, Toby, again, the host of Bust and Loose Baseball. They'll have full reaction to Woods Night. Uh, they have a great preview if you are headed to the game and want to uh, get a little bit more baseball in. And if you tuned in late and you're like, hey, I would like to know more, I just tuned in late, then the Rewind feature on the Odyssey app is your friend uh, or the podcast. Uh, you search the Hoffman Show wherever you get your podcasts, including in the free Odyssey app. And we are on demand for you anytime, anywhere. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Yates from ESPN. Yeah. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.